Well, welcome back to the Fishing Doctors Adventures. It's the first day of the ice season to me. I don't know, what is it? November 20th, the ice froze, I don't know. About a week, week and a half, I mean, two weeks ago now. I'm guessing there's gonna be quite a bit of ice out there. It's minus 12 right now. No wind, so it's quite nice. Partly cloudy, sunny, early ice is always good. Uh, let's talk a few things today we're gonna talk about. Uh, if you're a new ice angler, how do you get into the sport? What do you actually need? And um, next is first ice, how to be safe, and also how to not fall through the ice. And if you do, how to get out. Hopefully I don't fall through the ice. And then next thing is, uh, what is the basic setup to catch uh, brook trout and rainbow trout uh, early ice and where do you fish? So let's cover those things today and let's go have some fun. First things first, you want to dress uh, warm. You'll see here in British Columbia, to me, I think it's pretty mild temperatures. So I, and since I am pulling the sleigh and walking around a lot of the time, I don't usually wear my uh, winter pants like I do in Alberta. I just wear multiple layers like long johns and jeans, good uh, muck boots, wear a few layers of, of jackets so you can take off things if you get hot, that's a key. Dressing warm is the main thing for ice fishing because if you want to have fun, you got to stay warm. If you're not warm, you won't have fun. If you're a person who gets cold easily, then bring a heater, bring a shelter, a little tent. That's where it starts getting pricey. Uh, but if you're going to have fun, warmth is the key. Invest in a good pair of socks. Wool socks are the best. Uh, we'll keep you warm and a uh, hat. Well, you'll see I wear this hat because I get too hot when I'm pulling the sleigh. But I have another, um, you know, rabbit fur hat on that really helps keeping your heat, keeping your head warm. Uh, if you don't have proper headgear, you're going to get cold. Also, your hands uh, should have some gloves, uh, especially when you're walking out there. Uh, you'll see I don't wear them when I'm fishing. I find if your body's hot, your hands will be warm. But some people, the hands really get cold. And me, as I'm getting older, I don't have as good a circulation, I don't think. So my hands do get chilly. So it's, it's, it's good to have a few pairs of gloves. One little thin one when you're fishing. And a thicker mitts to get them warm if they do cool off. Okay, let's unload and uh, get fishing. This kind of ice auger is great for early ice. But you can use a hatchet if the ice is thin enough. Ice jigs. The Markham or Flash unit is key for ice fishing. And these things, I'll put them on right now so I don't forget. These are to help you get out of the ice if you fall through. Take them apart first thing in the spring. I mean, on the ice, winter. So it's easy to get them apart. Don't shove them together too hard. So when you need to get out of the ice, you can pop them apart. And then you just put that on your neck so that you're ready to go in case you do go through. Back up, mark them, just in case the first one dies on you. These seriously are the most important thing for ice fishing is your sonar. Catch way more fish with sonar. My electric ice auger, which you don't need, but it makes easy work of the ice. See, I got my ice pants. This is the warm hat I'm talking about. Little thin gloves, I'll put those on right now because it's a little chilly at minus 12. See how they're nice, can feel things easily. Makes fishing easier when you buy these little Thin gloves and put them on early before you get cold right you put things on once you're cold it's hard to warm up start out warm heat yourself up but not too hot in the vehicle and uh, dress down when you're in the car driving out so you don't get overheated and sweat that's the key and once you get out you're not too hot you dress up quick and then you get ready to go out and stay warm all day never get sweaty right that's that's how you get wet and then you get cold that's no good I realize I have my jigging jaw jacker, but I forgot the wheels, so I'm gonna leave it in the car. We can just use the stationary one. Got some straps to tie down my stuff on top. We'll throw everything on, and we'll go. I'm gonna try to get some underwater footage for you guys today, so I have this pull something to tape it with, and then hang it under the ice like that. Works good. So to start the day, I'll start off super shallow. Like uh, this is like two, two and a half feet deep. Uh, the fish will be cruising right over the green weeds, looking for scuds, other bugs. 
and that's where you want to set up first thing in the morning. Kind of push out a little bit deeper once the sun comes up. It's just peeking over the trees now. I'm a little late, but I'll put this uh, jaw jacker in. I'll drill a few more holes right around here and then we'll get fishing. So this is really super shallow. It's only about a foot between the ice and the weed top. So it might be too shallow, so I might drill a little bit out deeper. Look at that. I forgot to turn the camera on, the jaw jacker went off. And then I dropped, I lost them before I got here. Drop the back down and fish on. Nice fat football. Yeah, beauty. That's the kind of size I want to keep. Nice fat one. Let's get it back down there. That was good. He came in right away and smoked it. Just a little jig. I got a little piece of shrimp. I got some old shrimp that I had Brian for last year's steelhead. It's kind of gross, but it'll work. Let's drop it down there. We're in four feet of water right now. Oh, there's another one. I just dropped it down. Look at that. That's crazy. Look at that. I just dropped it down and he smoked it. I was a little smaller since they're hitting so crazy. I'll get this one back down there. Let's get back down there. This could be nuts. Four feet of water. And uh, that's three fish in a few minutes because I, the jaw jacker caught one right before I got here. That's nuts. That one just caught, I just dropped the jig down and he just came in and smoked it. Nuts. Oh, there's another one there. Another one already. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. There he is, there he is. There you go, got him. Look at that. Oh man, they're nice fish this year, huh? Look at that, I'm pulling them up so fast. Night, another nice little one on that circle tackle. Little three millimeter chartreuse jig. We'll get her back down. Let's put some more shrimp on. Holy dino, this is crazy. Just break off a little tiny piece of shrimp like that. You want your jig hanging at a little bit of an angle. Uh, don't let it hang straight down. Oh, there's one out. There's one already. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, that's, that's a nice one. Oh, he died. Fat pigs. Look how fat these ones are this year. Oh, man. Beauty fat slobs. Look at that. Wow, just one after another? That's insane. Well, this is absolutely nuts. I wasn't expecting this. Well, let me straighten my hook out a bit there. Okay. And uh, I wasn't expecting it this crazy. I haven't fished this lake since, oh, I don't know, about three, four years, because it winter killed bad. We weren't sure if it was coming back. And now it's definitely back fish here they stock it with a decent amount of fish and you can see it's just one after another now when you find the spot I'm off a, I'm just off one of those shallow weed flats where it's about a foot of water and I'm just where it starts to bend down you see I drilled holes about every three to four feet apart so I could find that edge so it goes from about one and a half feet deep and all of a sudden to four feet and the next hole six and then eight so this is where I want to be, just on this right on this edge. They're going to be cruising right along that top edge or just off it so they can swing in and grab the food as they're going by. Since jigging with tungsten is working, 
I'm gonna go get my uh, dead stick 36 and uh, my spoon rod the uh, what is it panfish 36 because those are much more fun to fish these fish on I'll get this set back up while I'm going to get that organized oh, oh there's one oh, one's right there let's see we lost our shrimp one just came in and grabbed it I was just setting back up he'll come back Just gonna set back up again. They're there already. Little guy. A lot smaller than the other ones. That's what a new stalker looks like. This guy would have got stalked last spring. It's good to see them in the lake. They stalk a lot of these and they grow up fast. Just need a little tiny piece of shrimp. They eat little tiny stuff like little beetles, little Little tiny beetles, little little shrimp, you know, you're not going for a huge presentation. Uh, you don't need to. That's why these little jigs work so amazing. Oh, there's one. There's one down there. Oh, there we go. Oh my, that was a good one. He hit hard. Man, he hit fast. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh. These are fatties. Holy oh, tiger. Look how fat they are. Fat slobs. Like the hook just drops down and they smoke it. They love these little jigs. Crazy how aggressive they are right now. That's how it is early ice. That's why you want to fish brook trout early ice. They have tons of oxygen. Weeds are still green. Lots of bugs around and they're just packing on the pounds. This is freezing up a little bit. I splashed water. You want to make sure you don't splash water on the trigger because then it doesn't release. It freezes up. Some guys say putting a little Vaseline on can help. Oh, there's one. Oh, man. They're there. Tiny one, tiny one. Got my dead stick 36 rod with a little black tungsten here. It's a three millimeter black tungsten with green spots. Let's see if it works. Black usually works pretty well. Chartreuse works amazing. And I'll get my spoon baited up too. But while we're waiting, we'll see if this dead stick can catch one. We'll watch the tip there, see if it drops. I'll bait up this spoon. Got a little VMC Tangler spoon on my Panfish 36 rod. We just put a little piece of bait on one of the treble hooks. Treble hooks, yes, in BC are okay in these stocked lakes without any hook restrictions. So make sure you check your drag. I always loosen my drags up over winter. This is how you check a drag. So that's too tight. Loosen it off. Pull a little bit too tight still. Back it off a little more. That's what you want. Kind of just like that. They're fairly aggressive with the small presentation. So I think if I put a spoon down there, they'll be coming in like crazy. Here's one. He just grabbed me. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. He's running. He's running. Oh my, that's a good one. It feels like a good one, but it's this light rod. Makes it real fun. That feels like a good one. Oh, what a fight. <laughs> Look at that. On the little tungsten jig, came in and smoked it. Oh yeah, on that dead stick. Look at that, kick over there. Oh yeah. That's a beauty. Look at that. Gorgeous brookies, one after another. I'll get, uh, I'll probably keep four here, and then I'll go, when it, if it slows down, I'll go fish the other lake, 
Uh, and I'll go fish another lake maybe for rainbows later. These sonars, even in shallow water, are great because you can see when the fish are coming, you get ready. You can also fish looking down the hole. And that does the same thing in shallow water. It's really clear water. You'll be able to see down there. And maybe I'll drop a camera down there so you can see what it looks like when they're coming through soon. But this is just too much fun to stop and set that up. It's crazy action. Nuts. Berserk. Bananas. Let's try dangling this spoon and see what happens. See if they go crazy for this spoon. These tingler spoons work really well. They have a nice flutter, send off a lot of flash. Low profile, so they're pretty slender, light spoon. They don't look that big in the water. Fish really target that treble if you put some bait on it. Oh, they're biting the spoon so hard. That's why sometimes the jig works better because they just inhale the whole thing. Whereas a spoon, they just bump it quick. Watch this, I'll drop the jig down and they'll hit it right away. Oh, look at that. There we go. Little guys. Maybe that's why they're just bumping the spoon because they're little guys. Oh, I didn't even see that one come in. Oh man, they stole my bait. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about ice safety since we're waiting for it. Oh, there's fish. We're talking about ice safety and uh, first thing in the year when you're coming out to any lake, you'll see it's either covered by snow or it's not covered by snow. I find most people when it's covered by snow have much less fear of going on the ice and actually that's that's the wrong thing to do. Ice that's covered with snow actually freezes slower and you can't see the inconsistencies in the ice when you're walking on it. Clear ice is usually much safer. It freezes faster and you can actually see through the ice to see how thick it is. Through the cracks, bubbles, whatever. So clear ice freezes much faster because it's exposed to the air, no insulating snow on it. And you can see what's going on. Snow. People see snow on ice and they don't even think about going on it. And that is the wrong thing to do. When there's snow cover on ice, it could be unsafe and you should always drill holes as you go out. Start right close to shore, find out how deep it is, drill every few feet and keep on checking the ice to make sure it's uh, thick enough for you to fish. When you're walking on a lake first thing in the year, never walk straight across the lake. Always stick to the shoreline. Don't stick right on the edge of the shore because sometimes it melts there. Stick like five to 10 feet from shore. That way it will usually will not be too deep if you fall through and it'll be more frozen. But don't go walking down the middle of the lake first thing in the ice season. That is just the wrong thing to do because lakes always freeze from the shore out to the middle. The deeper the lake is, the longer it takes to freeze. Shallower the lake, the quicker it freezes. Smaller the lake and the more sheltered it is from wind, also the faster it'll freeze. So these are the aspects you're looking for when you're picking a lake at early ice. Also, the higher the elevation is, the lower the temperatures drop and the lower the temperatures stay during the day. So these lakes will freeze faster at higher elevation. So early ice, especially interior of British Columbia, you're looking for those small, shallow lakes that are high elevation over a you know, 1,000, 1,500 foot elevation. They're gonna freeze uh, early to mid-November when you can get out on safe ice. Two inches of ice you can usually walk on but they recommend oh that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one he just came in and chomped it. Oh he came off man he came off. I'm gonna upsize the jig a little bit this one's a little tiny that was a big one Ooh, that was a good one. <sighs> okay as I was saying I I don't even know where I was. That one really threw me off. That was a big fish. <laughs> oh well, let's get back down there and catch another one. Okay, you can see I was using that little tungsten jig right there. I think that's like a three or five millimeter. I'm gonna upsize to this. I think this is seven millimeter. Bigger hook gap. 
bigger hook, stronger hook. So when you're fishing bigger trout, you know, three, five pounds up, you want to choose the little bit bigger one because these little ones, sometimes they're a little bit too light and they'll actually bend a little bit when the fish is hooked up and they can pull out. So remember that if you're catching fish and their hooks are pulling out, switch up to a bigger tungsten jig. Trout usually don't mind the little bit bigger one. Okay, got this bigger tungsten jig on now. Now they will stick on better. It's a good thing to keep in mind. If you're losing fish, and you're fishing bigger fish, you might as well put a little bit bigger tungsten jig on. And I wanna show you why these black tungsten jigs work so well. It's early ice and why the fish are really aggressive hitting them because they're eating these little beetles. This little beetle came up. See that little black beetle? And that's why that little black tungsten jig mimics it so well. They love inhaling these things. So that's probably what they're eating and why they're hitting that black tungsten jig so well. Look at that, love it on this rod. Doesn't feel quite as big as the last one, but he's pulling good. Oh man, look at him kicking. Yeah. <laughs> that black tungsten jig, I told you, put on a little bit bigger one doesn't change their attitude towards it and it, the hooking power is a lot better with that bigger gap hook and a little bit stronger hook so it won't bend on you if you're fishing these fish with hard mouths like that they just come in and crush this little black tungsten mimic the food size it doesn't always have to look exactly like it but the size profile color usually black is always a good color chartreuse is for some reason always a good color white's a good color for trout and shrimp this little deli shrimp you just break off little tiny pieces they love it oh there we go there's another good one big head shakes well that's that's pretty good head shakes oh yeah that's a good one Fat, that jig, oh, oh, oh. this is nuts. this dead stick 35 I know guys use it for dead sticking but lots of fun to fish it oh there we go oh that's another big one another nice one Ooh. Oy. Ah. Oh. yeah look at that he just inhaled that jig it's gone <laughs> he just made it disappear look at that they just ate it they actually are eating so heavily right now just crushing them so remember the limit is five so let these ones go well it's a pretty good day out here okay that was it had a great morning out here uh for brook trout 
it was crazy action up until about 10 a.m. and then it slowed down a bit. There were still fish coming through every 10-15 minutes and a little bit slower on the bite but they could be convinced to bite. So if you can't get out here first thing in the morning they're usually biting throughout the day. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share with somebody else who you think needs to learn something about ice fishing. Thanks for watching guys. God bless as always. See you later. Thank you.